Welcome to Built with Grit. I am your host and strategic partner in cost reduction, Luis Fernandez. And today I'm joined by my friend Dave Mason, who is the CEO of San Miguel High School, who's doing amazing work here in Tucson, uh, a group that uh, I'm very happy to, you know, participate uh, in any ways. And I think it's something that um, you should probably tune into, give it a listen, and then figure out how you can get involved too, because these folks uh, are doing some amazing work. So with that, Dave, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, it's another beautiful day here in, in Tucson, Arizona, and I'm looking out into the courtyard at our school here, uh, just located off Valencia uh, and 12th down by the airport. And I see, uh, you know, 300 wonderful students here in their passing period between classes. So it inspires me every day. So it's good to be here. So Dave, um, you know, for those that don't know, tell us a little bit about, um, talk to us about the history, because I think the history of San Miguel is really uh, compelling of how the, actually the Cristo Rey network got started. Um, so tell us a little bit about that and what you guys do and kind of your mission. Um, so people understand why you and I are so pumped to have this conversation. Yes, absolutely. So uh, as you mentioned, San Miguel High School here in Tucson is uh, part of a larger network of schools, larger national network of schools. And we are the only national network of schools that is uh, that serves students that fall below the poverty level, offers students uh, a pathway into careers and a pathway to college. So we talk about being college and career prep and to and through college, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. But um, I believe it's the most uh, inspiring movement in education today. And um, you know, as we say in the business world, Luis, if, if something is magical and it works and it's successful, it's, uh, it's scalable. And that's certainly the case with uh, Cristo Rey. So, um, San Miguel opened in 2004, but I'll, I'll flash back uh, to the mid-90s in the Pilsen neighborhood in, in Chicago, um, which is only a couple miles from the downtown uh, business and financial district in Chicago, for, for those that know it and those that don't. Um, and it, that neighborhood had been a gateway uh, neighborhood uh, going back 100 years to, to immigrant groups coming into Chicago. 100 years ago, those were um, primarily, you know, um, Irish Catholic, Polish Catholic, uh, German Catholic, um, you know, folks from Europe that were coming over to try to make a better life for themselves and, and for their um, for their children. Fast forward to the mid 90s. Well, um, most of those families uh, were the beneficiaries of, of good Catholic schools that were located in those neighborhoods, inner city Catholic schools. But as we know, those schools begin to shutter um, and close and uh, not as many religious orders were running those schools. And so uh, those schools had disappeared from that neighborhood. So enter the, uh, the Jesuits um, and Father Foley, who is a Jesuit priest, spent his first 30 years in Peru um, working with poor people in Peru and, and help, helping to educate. He was called back to Chicago to come up with an innovative idea to offer a great education uh, to those primarily Latino families from Mexico and Latin America uh, who lived in that neighborhood now, also predominantly Catholic, a great educational opportunity. And so they came up with this great idea that they would go to downtown Chicago businesses and uh, they would knock on the doors, literally cold calling and, you know, there was no LinkedIn back then, so they, they had to tap into their networks uh, as best they could, and they asked uh, these companies, would you hire our students? Um, and in return, the money that they would earn uh, from these entry-level positions in these companies and hospitals and you know, financial institutions, Chicago Board of Exchange, the list goes on, that they would um, use that money to offset the cost of the Catholic college prep program. As they say, uh, Luis, it started as a way to pay the bills, a very unique financial model, but it turned out really, the internship program turned out to be the special sauce of the program because students were, were seeing themselves um, going into these office buildings every day, working there, 
and 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 belonging, right? We we talk a lot about equity today. We talk a lot about access. Equity and access uh, is what it's all about. And and these schools walk the walk, and and that the students um, would go and and have these experiences, intern, get a great education, go off to college, and hopefully come back. And many work in the companies uh, that that they interned in. You know, Dave, <clears throat> um, in the few months that, I, that I've been involved in kind of working with you guys, some of the things that uh, kids have said um, that they say almost kind of offhand, you don't realize the experience of someone um, and how they, you know, they, they sort of start to develop um, implicitly this lower view of themselves and when they get into these programs and these, they get this opportunity to work alongside people, they start to see themselves differently. Um, you had those, those uh, you had a lunch and learn recently that I, I had the opportunity to attend. And one of the girls said in a list of somebody asked her, what did you learn? And she had a list of things that she learned. And, and some of it was kind of trivial about Excel and, 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 you know, Microsoft office and, and, you know, these things, but one of the things she said, and it was almost like, offhand mid-sentence um it was i can look people in the eye you, that was uh, to me sorry well i get emotional right uh this kid had seen herself at a lower position that these people that she was working alongside she learned that she could look them in the eye right i mean that's just incredible to me uh so, yeah, we, we, uh, I understand because I get emotional too, uh, Luis, every time I'm around these kids and especially when they come back as young professionals who have succeeded in life and have not only, you know, experienced that success themselves, but they've shown the way to the generations that'll come after them. Right. But to go yeah. back to that, you know, the eye contact and the confidence and the handshake, and to understand, like, I do belong in these in these offices, you know, on the 37th floor of the of the Hancock building in downtown Chicago. I deserve those views. Right. Hmm. I have the same abilities. You know, we, we've all heard this this saying that, you know, um, that talent is distributed equally and universal, regardless of income, regardless of your parents education or the zip code that you live in. But but opportunity is not mm. right. And so we're providing that opportunity, but also, you know, that, that when you see the magic of uh, the, the transformation of a freshman who has a really hard time looking you in the eye and has a limp handshake and is, you know, almost shaking to by the time that they're graduating and they're going off to college and they've worked in these jobs. And, um, you know, I always say it, it's, it's, when you care deeply and you walk with these young people, there's, there's no telling what they can achieve. And that is very much in line with the De La Salle Christian brothers who sponsor our school. Um, all of our schools have a religious Catholic religious sponsor and, and San Miguel is sponsored by the De La Salle Christian brothers who go back all the way to France in the 1600s and their educational model is touching the hearts and the minds of the young people entrusted to their care. They're not ordained priests like, like the Jesuits um, who founded the very first school, but they're a teaching order and they dedicate their lives to teaching young people. And so we actually follow that model here. So we are a Cristo Rey model. We have the internship and uh, we follow that, that model but our, our culture of our school is, we call it, it's Lasallian uh, in response to the foundations that the Christian brothers have, have set. So it all, it all comes together uh, in this, this magical formula that transforms these, these young people into so, young adults. <laughs> Let, we'll get into the, uh, I'd like to get into the kind of the nuts and bolts. Uh, but before that, tell us a little bit about how your specific San Miguel school um, got started. Yeah, so it's actually a really amazing story and a, a testament to the Tucson community and uh, some some business leaders and some champions here in our, our local community. So 
Um, you know, if you go back, the, the Cristo Rey movement, as I said, it started in 1996. They replicated the model with the first replication in Portland, Oregon, um, De La Salle North Catholic, uh, which is still going strong. They just moved into a new building. And then um, word began to spread about this, this model. And we got some great press. There's a, there was a 60 Minutes video, which you know, we can share with the, the viewers today, which is incredibly powerful. Um, and it, it talks about the first school. But word got out. And, um, and the word actually made it all the way to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as uh, to a venture capitalist, Silicon Valley venture capitalist named BJ Casson, who had taken several tech companies public and um, was incredibly successful, um, a religious man who was involved with the brothers who I mentioned earlier. And uh, the idea developed to provide seed money to replicate this model in other cities. So the year that, that San Miguel opened in 2004, about six other schools also opened that year across in different places in the country. I believe Cleveland, Ohio, Baltimore, New York, and a few others. And uh, But how it happened was most of us here in Tucson know uh, Mr. Jim Click, uh, incredible businessman, deeply, deeply cares about the Tucson community, um, also a religious man, and just has the biggest heart. And he happened to know BJ uh, Casson, who I meant earlier, and BJ had mentioned about this model to Jim Click. And one day, uh, the way Jim tells it is he drove around the south side here in Tucson uh, with his wife, and he said, you know, we've been here for a long, long time. We haven't really invested or, or done a lot, you know, for the South side. And, and, um, you know, he, he said, this is perfect. You know, this model and, and this opportunity is perfect. And originally there was some pushback. They didn't have a religious sponsor. Mm. They said, oh, that, you know, the Tucson community is not big enough to, to have enough jobs and internships for the students. Well, you know, as you hear often, uh, Mr. Click didn't take no for an answer, <laughs> and uh, you know he he stepped up to the plate and 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 he made a, a really foundational investment, which by the way he still says is the greatest investment he's ever made. Mm. And going back to BJ Casson, um, BJ still says to this day, having taken all those tech companies uh, public, that it's the greatest investment that he's ever made because of the young people and ultimately what they will give back. To the local community so you know in tucson we're really proud that that we have a school phoenix still doesn't have a school yeah and they're bigger and uh but it it shows how much the community has embraced this program and and i'm moved by it and 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 very very grateful to those who came came before me yeah it, it's amazing and i've heard it from the horse's mouth that could say you know can confirm <laughs> that that is in fact what he says you know and uh uh, as, as Christians, right. This is, uh, we're, we're called to do like two or three things. I mean, uh, Jesus didn't really give a whole lot of commands. I mean, there were really high standards, right. But it was like three or four things, right. Love your God, love your neighbor, go make disciples. Right. And then, you know, live a life that, uh, people ask, you know, what is the, what is the source of, of, uh, the hope that is within you. Right. Um, and so, you know, what, what does he say to, uh, Peter, do you love me? Then, then, you know, uh, take care of my, my flock, right. You know, tend my sheep, uh, and here it is, right. So you see, uh, when you live it, of course, um, it feels like the great investment because you're doing like, this is what I put you out here for. Like this other stuff, this is great. And this is important. And, and, you know, being a great businessman and, and earning that, uh, wealth, uh, be a good a steward of it. And when you do those things in the manner that you're called, uh, you know, it's, I can't even talk about it without like tearing up, man. <laughs> uh, it's my first time. Yeah. I very, very well said, by the way, um, I'm going to have to have to have you join me for some of these, these uh, speaking engagements, because that's perfect. <laughs> And I, I couldn't agree more that, you know, we're all, um, we, let me back up. We're all 
uh, put here on this earth for a reason. And we talk a lot here at San Miguel with the young people um, about vocation. Now there's a religious vocation and, you know, the brothers here have taken vows and they've dedicated their lives to their, um, both their teaching vocation and their religious vocation. And we have some other religious here um, as well. Uh, we have a, a Franciscan uh, sister here with us as well. But I actually just got invited the other day to speak in one of the religion classes about, about my vocation as a lay person involved in, in this mission and what I've been called to do. And it was a really powerful moment. It was seniors in their religion class, you know, and I talked a lot about, you know, the importance and the magnitude of, of the work. But I think the most important part was that everybody here involved in, in this mission, in, including you, yourself, Luis, uh, you know, there's, there's just concentric circles of, of people and the students are in the bullseye, right? Like if you think of this dartboard where, you know, the students are right in the middle of this mission, that if we surround them with the love and support that, that they need to succeed, you know, then, then, we've done our, then we've done our job. You know, a few years ago, um, I was invited to speak at the Sun Corridor Luncheon. It seems like forever now. And I got, I got uh, kind of the closing spot, you know, and I followed, I think, Greg White, you know, from Raytheon Missile Systems. Mm. Um, and by the way, you know, we have 24 students now at, at, at Raytheon. But, you know, all of these great business leaders had spoken that day, um, and it was really powerful. And I just simply stood up there. And, you know, first of all, I said, how many of you know of our school and what we do? And I'd say half the room raised their hand, right? So mm. I was amazed and humbled by that. But then I just simply said, you know, we're here today, we're talking about business development, but the greatest investment that we can possibly make is in our young people. And to show them uh, the opportunities and to help them uh, achieve their their dreams and develop uh, develop their talent. And uh, you know, it was like everybody applauded. And and what was great is that a lot of those hands had already been up. They were already participating in the program and and supporting. So again, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. So really, really awesome. So let's talk a little bit about. Uh nuts and bolts, right? So kind of into the detail business, you know, the folks listening in, okay, it seems like we're, you know, we're really invested, uh, you know, in a lot of different ways, emotionally, obviously. Um, uh, but why is this so effective? How does it work? What is the detail? Um, and why, if, if I'm a business owner, um, how, how can this benefit my business? Because I, I think that's a piece that people need to understand as well. Yeah. So two things. Um, one, you know, we, we, we literally refer to it as investing in the talent pipeline and especially now, right. We're living in a really interesting time with help wanted signs all over the place and every type of job imaginable, including, you know, offices and, and professional environments. Um, they need a talented pipeline, um, you know, to continue being a successful business. And uh, so for the company or, or the partner, they are getting this incredibly wonderfully talented group of young people that are exposed to what they do. Now, not every young person will want to become an accountant, right? Or uh, work in a hospital but what they're getting is an, they're already shaping an understanding of where they see themselves and their direction in life and what they want to do. I mean, you're probably like me. You remember when you went off to college, you weren't really sure. Most likely, I certainly didn't know what I wanted to do. Our students have, have that direction. And um, so what happens is that the companies invest in these, these young people, but they're getting amazing workers. We hear it all the time that often our San Miguel students are outperforming some of the adults <laughs> that are working at these, at these companies and the sky is the limit. And it, it's not charitable by any way, shape or form. Our companies rely on our students. So, I mean, for example, we have students that are transporters 
at Banner University Medical Center. Talk about an important job. They have an iPad. They need to get patients uh, with their records, you know, to a, uh, a surgery perhaps, or back to their room. Um, I mean, these are really important jobs. Um, our students are almost all bilingual. Oftentimes they're using their Spanish, um, you know, here in Tucson, we're a bilingual city. Um, a lot of Spanish speakers rely on that. And our students can switch back and forth between English and Spanish. Uh, regardless of the work that they're doing. And so companies are getting real value um, for the partnership. And in return, they often get those students back again mm. when they come back from college. And uh, we see it all the time. Uh, and, and so it's an investment um, that will pay, pay dividends. In fact, speaking of Raytheon, you know, I usually try to go, they have an all day orientation for their students. And they tell the students, probably within the first hour of that orientation directly, we are investing in you in hopes that you will come back and work <laughs> at our company. I mean, how awesome is that? Incredible. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, how does it work for the, the students, right? So um, they, they're getting jobs, but they're also going to school. Uh, so how does this work? Like, does the company get their 40 hours? Like, uh, let's get into that a little bit. Sure. We, um, we refer to, uh, full teams of students. So that's kind of the starting point. So we have, uh, a team of four students. Um, so for example, if we partner with a company, one full-time equivalent, is four students and on monday you'll get the freshman student uh on tuesday you'll get uh the junior student on wednesday the sophomore student thursday the freshman student and then friday is a rotating day so once a month um first week you'll get the monday worker on friday and then the following week you get the tuesday worker on friday so you'll always have your position staffed um, but we also have smaller uh, companies that may only want one or two students. Um, so you might have a student on, say, Tuesday and Thursday or Monday and Wednesday, um, however you want to set it up. And that's prorated. Um, one of the great things about the program is that it's really like your uh, San Miguel acts almost as a temp agency. So um, you're actually, the students are on our payroll here at San Miguel. They're not on the company payroll. We handle all the benefits, workman's comp, everything like that. Um, insurance. So, yeah, insurance. <laughs> we assume all liability. Uh, absolutely. And, and so really from an HR perspective, it's, it's easy for the company um, once we sign that contract. And then we do all of the training uh, and support for those students. So um, we can provide as much um, onboarding uh, as needed. So if you say, you know, we really need the student to know a certain kind of software to work in HR, we can help get them going and get them trained on that. Um, it really depends on the company. And so we, we strive to meet the needs of every individual company in terms of what they need. And, um, and then we work from there. I, I think it's awesome also. So every day they'll get, you know, you guys have a freshman, a junior, and then a sophomore, and then a senior, and then Friday's a rotating day. Um, so these kids are signing up, you know, when they come into the school and they're getting accepted into the school, they know as a freshman, hey, you ha will have a job. Uh, so you are going to work and you will go to college because you said, I think you said 100% of your students go on to secondary education. Is that correct? Yeah, so 100% acceptance, uh, and then some students, we do have students that will uh, choose the military, um, but everybody's accepted to college. In fact, we require every student to apply to about 10 different colleges and universities, um, so then they have the opportunity to decide, right? So the way I like to say it is that we work to set a really wonderful table full of opportunities. And then the student and their parents sit down and they look at, at the different options, right? And that's a great place to be. 
Like, you know, do I stay here and go to U of A and have all these scholarships to stay in state or do I take advantage of these scholarships and go out of state? Mm. Um, it really, it really depends. And so, but, but to set our students up to have those options, you know, is, is what it's, what it's all about. And so to back up to that schedule, we often get asked, you know, well, well, how does it work with class? So for example, on Monday, when the seniors go off to work, there is no senior class. There are no senior classes on Monday. So those teachers um, are, it's kind of their planning and prep day. They may have some meetings that day and the students are, are off at work. And, and then secondly, I'll say that, you know, every Crystal Ray school has these 10 different mission effectiveness standards and I won't go into all of them, but standard six is that the corporate work study program and the classroom experience need to be integrated. So for example, they're not two separate worlds that the skills that are being developed uh, in the classroom and the workplace should be intertwined and the students should be able to see the connection between um, you know, the two worlds, uh, college prep academics and the work study program. I, I think that's uh, really great also is that, you know, I, I was having a conversation with an organization and I was, I mentioned San Miguel um, and they were actually a little apprehensive about taking on a freshman. And I said, look, hold on. Before you get apprehensive about that, you need to understand that today, if that kid doesn't have a job, he's getting or she is getting training for work. These are kids that are highly skilled in Excel and all of these different, you know, Microsoft programs, and they're getting like all these different training. So like, don't count them out because, you know, you may have folks in your current organization that you're paying that don't have the skills that these kids do because they're actually having the opportunity and the time to get those skills trainings uh, before they go. Right, so we have two cohorts of students right now that are working towards their uh, Excel Microsoft certification. And by the way, I wouldn't be able to pass that. Uh, our Excel instructor took it last year and he's a very talented instructor and he didn't make it through the first go around. Now he did come back and pass it, um, you know, thank goodness. But he said, it's a challenging, challenging test. And he suspects, I just talked to him the other day, he suspects that almost all of our students this year will be in a position to earn that certification. And that's remarkable because we hear from our employers time and again, Excel certification, data entry. Yeah so important um you know we have kids doing pivot tables and all these different right. advanced programs and i don't know how to do any of that uh yeah so i i could tell you um i used to work in marketing and program management for uh fortune 100 um and that was really where my excel skills um grew and it was i learned through um the youtube university of uh how the heck do i do this there's got to be an easier way please don't make me have to type this number in every single time um and uh having that skill going into it if you have folks that are in data entry like if you're doing marketing research um or you're pulling in um surveys of information the when you start having somebody manually typing stuff in that's where you have opportunities for error and folks that understand Excel um, and this program can create these, these, uh, it doesn't even have to be a macro, but they can create the, uh, a worksheet that pulls the data and organizes it and then presents it to, you know, you have data, but you need to have data presented in a way that promotes decision-making because that's the whole reason you're pulling this data anyway. So this is just a massive skill um, that is not, prolific in the workplace as much as it should be. No, and it, it, so, and it's also not frequently taught in a typical um, high school experience. Right. You know, I, we, we take great pride in that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's such an opportunity and the kids love it, you know, they're, it's just amazing to see how quickly they pick up on this, um, these types of programs. Uh, it, it really is. And so um, you have folks, if, if an employer wants to um, 
is, is thinking about this and saying, okay, I want to cure more. Like how, how does that work? They, they are going to get a nine to five. Do they have to pick up the student? Do they have to drop off the student or is it nine to five? Like, what are the hours? How does that uh, kind of daily, you know, thing work out for them? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question, Louise. It, uh, it varies. Uh, so we have uh, many routes that we run all over Tucson. So we, we transport the students to and from work. And we have, you know, early morning drop off, early pickup. Uh, we have late drop off, you know, for the company that might not start until, you know, nine or later, you know, we have some kids that hang out here, they do some homework in the morning, and then they get on a later route, and they're dropped off. But anywhere in Tucson, we go way up north, um, you know, to Marana uh, and drop off up there. We go to the far east side, of course, the downtown business area, you name it, we get the kid there. And um, it depends on what the company wants. And uh, I should also mention that we have a remote work hub as well in partnership with the Community Foundation, which is where you were uh, the other day for that lunch and learn. Um, we have one of the suites there uh, for those familiar with the Community Foundation for Southern Arizona. and. On any given day, we have, you know, a dozen or so students that are working remotely for companies, not just in Tucson, but beyond Phoenix. We had a young lady working for a company in, in Connecticut. As companies have pivoted um, to adapt to the new normal, uh, so have we. And we can't rest on our laurels, you know, as work is changing, you know, everything from in person to flex, uh, you know, some days in the office, some days remote. We have to be able to re to meet that uh, need, and our students have to be able to adapt to it, because their future will be different than yep. than many of our workplace experiences that have been more traditional. Sure. And the kids, they seem to adjust uh, very very well, uh, better than the adults in many cases. Yeah, they're resilient, man. They don't have that uh, preconceived notion of what life should be like, so they're willing to accept whatever you, whatever you hand them. Um, so what are some jobs that these students have been most successful at? If somebody, um, you know, that you could say, hey, if you have this need, this is what our students are really, really good at. Uh, and you're going to get um, a tremendous return um, on this investment. Yeah. And I would say it, I mean, it varies uh, all over the board, but I would say start with what your needs are as a large or small company. And every company has a lot of different tasks, important tasks that need to be done and not always uh, the available uh, manpower, so to speak, to get those things done. And oftentimes the business model depends on those tasks, right? We talked about earlier the data entry, which is a really good one to start with. It takes a lot of time to pull data, to develop reports, to compile data. And if you have a San Miguel student that can work diligently on that for hours at a time and prepare uh, data and those reports under the supervision of one of your employees and have those ready, the impact can be incredible. But there are so many amazing stories um, in terms of what the students are doing. One that jumps into my mind right away is a student over at um, Freeport McMoran, uh, the mining company here in Tucson. Uh, there's, you know, Tucson is a, is a mining hub, international world mining hub. So there are companies here from, from technology to uh, chemistry labs that are doing work that we don't even think about. So in this instance, they, in this lab at Freeport McMoran, they are analyzing mining samples, mineral samples that fly in from all over the world, in, from mines in Indonesia, Peru, um, parts of Europe, Asia, uh, depending where the operation is. And in these high-tech chemistry labs, they are analyzing these samples to get a sense of the process to extract copper, for example. And the students have learned how to do some of that very, very wow. important um, chemistry analysis 
And they're also doing that at another company here, uh, BASF uh, in Tucson, that also does similar uh, work. And I was told, I went and toured, and I was told that depending on those uh, chemistry uh, lab analyses, it can mean the difference in terms of copper extraction of millions of dollars. Mm internationally in terms of how they decide to extract that copper yeah that's incredible that 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 work is that that important um and you know the list the list goes goes on and on in terms of what the students are doing but it is meaningful important work that is absolutely connected to the company's uh financial success and i'll tell you so you know you <laughs> just thinking about some of the tasks that i have done in the past and, you know, I was a six figure employee doing, you know, making pivot tables like th they spent a lot of money on those spreadsheets uh, to get this information uh, that I was creating. And, and you know, and I, I also want to piggyback on what you're talking about, like this example that you gave is that a lot of folks um, and I've seen it, uh, you know, I've worked for some companies that had San Miguel students and they, they gave them sort of. Um, uh, smaller, easier tasks. And, and, you know, as a leader, I've also been leading teams for 20 years. I can tell you that oftentimes you'll be surprised at what people are capable of doing. And if you give them those challenging tasks, yeah, I mean, you'll reach a point where you'll be like, okay, that one was a bit too much. Like, let's just back it off just a little bit, but give people, and especially these kids that are not asking for a handout, but get a hand up, give them the opportunity to prove how awesome they are. Uh, right. give them those challenging tasks and let's see, you know, what they're capable of doing. Um, and I think they're going to surprise you and in, in what their capabilities are. Right. And, 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 and that gets to that important point that we talked about earlier is that one of the greatest career takeaways, uh, for these students is certainly was for me and, and many others, including yourself, is that if you do a good job on the task that you've been given, you'll get more tasks, right? And you'll be rewarded for your efforts. And, you know, we have students that will work in four different jobs over their four years here at San Miguel, but we'll also have students that'll stay with a company for all four years. Mm. And what they have found is that I started doing filing and and some of these smaller tasks as a freshman and then when i succeeded or excelled and did really well other opportunities opened up other departments right and and this idea of of my work ethic in advancing you know we talk about kind of the the corporate ladder but our students have climbed that already as high school students yeah Right. And we hear from supervisors that said, you know, they came in, they started out doing this. And now I have them like running a team. They're a senior and, and now they're like, you know, they're running a team of people. And, and it's just incredible. And so it shows them, you know, what's possible. And, um, you know, that they'll never forget that uh, opportunity that was provided. It, it's amazing hearing that, you know, you taking this kid that was, you know, coming from poverty, probably due for um, less than favorable outcomes in life. You pluck them out of that. And you're not just plucking out that kid. It's that kid and their siblings and their parents and all the future kids that they're going to have as well. I mean, it's a generational effect that is being had. Now you take that kid and, you know, they're, they're working in this job and they see the promotion and then they will get accepted into college because every one of your students does. And then, you know, they're getting out of that. And, and while their peers in college are looking for jobs, they've got an employer that's like, hey, you, you done yet? Like, is that you got it? Because you need to come back. Right. So they've already they're going to walk into. I mean, it's amazing. This is absolutely incredible what you guys are doing. Yeah, it, that's that's a real life story, Luis. We see it over and over again where they they do come back. And in some cases, you know, and, and we're old enough now to see this, and some of the other Cristo Rey schools are old enough to see this, that alums are actually supervising current students mm. in that workplace, right? That, yeah. that they're actually like, hey, you know, don't tell me it's hard or this or that. I did the same thing, right? Like, yeah. 
you know, here it is. And so the kids see those role models, mm-hmm. you know, and say, wow, you, you know, you did the, the same exact thing. And, you know, it's worth pointing out that in our admissions process, we interview the students and we interview the parents. So the students come in for an interview and often what draws them to the school, you know, we say, what, why, why San Miguel? It's like the very first question. What, why do you want to go here? And many of the students say the work program, Mm. no other high school has that here, you know, in, in Arizona or Tucson, the work program, the opportunities. And then we hear it from the parents too, right? That, wow, you know, these, my son or daughter is going to get this opportunity to go into these companies and build a resume that I certainly didn't have. <laughs> right. I was, you know, I mean, could you imagine? That was, a, you know, that was a lifeguard in the summertime, right? Like, <laughs> right. I was a baggage handler for Delta Airlines, you know, and, and these kids are working in, you know, some cases, Fortune 500 companies, Raytheon Missile Systems, Banner UMC. Yeah. Uh, you know, Freeport, Mac brand, you name it. So um, what if a company wants somebody year round? Can they still get that? They can. And one of the benefits of that is that the students, um, when they work during the summer or any of their other vacations, they get to keep their paycheck. Mm. So uh, the students love it. They get to go in and work during a vacation. And oftentimes that's when a lot of these companies have folks that are taking their vacation leave. So you hire a San Miguel student, they come in, you go off on vacation (laughs) and you come back and everything's cleaned up and your files are fantastic (laughs) and your data is entered and and you didn't miss a beat. Uh, So yeah, it works out really well for everybody. Is is their pay rates uh, competitive with, um, you know, kind of if I had to hire somebody off the street? Right. So right now, a uh, team of four students is $24,000 for a year uh, contract. And that's very, very reasonable, um, especially set against the backdrop of a climate right now where there are labor shortages and the challenges to attract um, talented labor. And, you know, we, uh, my colleague and I, Sam Miller, who's the VP of, of the corporate work study program here, we went down to a local hotel, a uh, new local hotel right downtown here in Tucson. We met with the manager and, and she was really stressed. She said, I, I can't find people to work my front desk, my reception. And this place is going to have a, a hard time running the way it needs to. And, you know, Sam and I looked at each other. We looked at her. We said, we've got capable bilingual students that can step in right now. And you don't have to worry about them leaving. Yep. Uh, they can do that job, um, you know, starting next week or, you know, tomorrow, whatever you need. <laughs> uh, we, we can take care of it. And we're hearing that all over Tucson right now. Uh, so we, we can definitely help. And even if you're just interested in sitting down and hearing more about the opportunities through the corporate work study program, um, you know, reach out uh, our website, www.sanmiguelhide.org and um, check it out. There's a corporate work study drop down menu. Um, there's some really great graphics and, and more details about the model. And then you can always just call as well. Reach out to me, uh, Dave Mason. I'm president and CEO here. And then or Samantha Miller, uh, who's our vice president of corporate work study. And, and we're more than happy to to break it down and have a great conversation about this program. Uh, are you guys currently looking for employment? Like, do you have every student in a, in a job or do you need more jobs? We still need more jobs. Um, we, we, we can definitely use more. The pandemic was tough uh, as companies moved to different models or left the office and went remote. Um, you know, it's starting to pick back up again as companies figure out their model um, if it's remote, they've realized now that we can accommodate that. Um, and so it's starting to bounce back, but we still have about at least 50 students that need a placement. And uh, so we, we are ready. If you, if you want to find out more, partner with us. And, and the students, as you said, uh, since they haven't been placed, they are working on beefing up their skills, um, conducting uh, different 
uh, skill development modules um, here on campus and uh, training and um, they're, they're ready. So when you're ready, we're ready. Um, that's, ah, it's a, it fires me up, man. So now what if somebody's listening to this or not in Tucson? Um, how can they go and see if there's a Cristo Rey school uh, in their city? What's the best place for them to go see if there's an opportunity like this? Yeah, so the, the website is www.cristorey.org. And there's a map and a list of cities and a bunch of really good information. Um, and I would encourage anyone to, to check it out. But also, if you have remote work, you know, I always say with every challenge comes great opportunity. And that's the case with the pandemic that we have now realized that, you know, we don't, we're not limited to work here in Tucson in person. Like I said, we had a young lady working for a company in Connecticut. I was a fashion company and she was doing fashion blogging and a bunch of really, really great work um, on social media. And we work through that, no problem whatsoever. So um, I think the future uh, is less boundaries as far as time and space. So yeah, you can find a school near you or open yourself uh, to the possibility of remote work based right here in Tucson. That's, that's amazing. And, you know, I think um, the effect that you guys are having and, and the schools, I, I think you mentioned to me one time you started uh, what, what was the, what year did it start and, and how many schools are you at now uh, nationally? 19, yeah, it started in 1996 in Chicago and we are now 38. Uh, you and I were just talking about uh, Cristo Rey, Miami, your That's hometown, right. which is opening uh, this coming year, this coming fall. And that'll be, be really exciting to see how that grows. And um, fun fact, their principal their founding principal is a graduate of the flagship school in Chicago. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. And we're starting to see more of that. Right. And, and we have some really talented uh, rising star alumni working here at San Miguel. And that's one of my personal dreams is that when I'm ready to go sit on the beach at some point, it might be a, a San Miguel alum uh, who's sitting in my seat, which, which would make me, uh, incredibly happy. I'm so excited to see you guys exploding. I mean, if that's more than one new school per year, and we know that uh, it's been exponential because, you know, the first school was a few years out, you know, like, uh, and, and there were years where you're, you're planting two and three at the same year. And um, it's just awesome to see. I'm, I'm so excited uh, to, you know, I feel like it's early in the, in this uh, still to, to be able to be you know, even a small part of, of this and, and helping you guys succeed. And, and I hope folks will um, go to those websites and check it out. And even if it's not for them, and if you're, if you're still with us here and you're inspired by this, that, that you share this with somebody or tell somebody about it, even if it's not for you, let's get this word out um, and let's make a real lasting, permanent, generational difference uh, in the lives of these families. Couldn't have said it better myself, Luis. That's, that's how you got involved, right? And now you're hooked. Uh, <laughs> so you're 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 here to stay, which is which is awesome, and we're thrilled to have you. And thanks for having me on. Uh, I I love talking about it, and I uh, look forward to to speaking with anybody that that reaches out. Awesome. I'm gonna put all the links that I can uh, in the description of this video. Um, so share with who you can, and um, yeah, let's get out there and let's make some things happen. So thank you, Dave. Thank you, Luis. Take care.